Hey everyone, in this video I will be deriving the moment of inertia expression for a solid cylinder rotating about a central axis that runs the length of the cylinder. So for this case, the cylinder is of length capital L and is of radius capital R. The mass density in this case, since it is three-dimensional, is let me write it up here. Rho is mass per volume now. And to preemptively solve for mass, we have Rho times V. Since this is, again, a uniform mass distribution, we can solve, or we can split this up into very, very tiny chunks of mass dm. The most symmetrical way to do that is to actually split up this cylinder into concentric rings. Actually, let me make this a little bigger so you can see These rings will run the span of this cylinder. They will run the length. So if I were to draw the inside of it, they would run like this. Or something like that. This way, we can concentrically increase their radii from zero at the central axis outwards until they have a radius of capital R. The entire time, each of these rings of differential length, we'll call it, whoops, that's of a, a radius R, they are of differential area, dA. Each one of those comprises a differential area, dA, like that. So a volume is simply area times a length, right? And so now, if we have some differential ring of differential mass, that has an expression like that. So now the L remains constant, the rho, the mass density remains constant, but the only thing that's changing is that area. So we can write that as differential area dA. And so again, since this is a continuous mass distribution, we have integral R squared dm. Okay. And this is where solving for differential mass in terms of dA is helpful. So now we can plug this in, r squared times rho, I'm going to put L on this side, and dA over there. Okay. So we can split up area, actually, into that area in the shaded region in the cylinder. Right? That's just the area of a circle. Right? The area of a circle is simply pi r squared, right? So dA is simply 2 pi r times, via the chain rule, dr. So now plugging that expression into our integral, we have integral r squared rho times l times 2 pi r dr. And now we are purely integrating with respect to R. So now let me pull the constants rho. Well, let me do 2 pi. I like to have that first. Times rho times L times integral 
of r cubed dr. So we've turned this integral from an integral of mass, but we've simply used geometry and a, a sprinkling of, of calculus to now turn this integral into an integral with respect to radius. Okay. So what are our limits? Well, we're going from the central axis, which is a radius 0, out to the outer radius of capital R. So now we can integrate 2 pi r rho l, and the integral now is r to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to capital R. Plugging this in, we have capital R to the fourth over four plus zero. And so we have two pi rho L um, R to the fourth all over four. Okay. Two's cancel. Or the two cancels there brings a two there. We can turn rho back into what it's defined to be up above, right? Rho is mass per volume. What's the volume of this cylinder? Well, it's simply, uh, let's see, pi times capital R squared. This is the volume of the cylinder overall, so it's capital R times L, the length. So now taking this, and plugging it in for row right there gives us the following. We have, let's see, pi. Uh, let me do this. Let me do L r cubed over 2 times row. So it's, that's m pi is on the bottom, r squared, L, oops, L. And now the pi's cancel. Two factors of r cancel. And l cancels. And we're left with simply 1 half m r squared. And this is the moment of inertia expression for a solid cylinder rotating about a central axis that runs the length of the cylinder.